Every couple of years, Americans watch as the government dukes it out over whether to raise the mysterious debt ceiling that allows the U.S. to pay off its many financial obligations around the world, like arguing over how to split up a check. But have you ever wondered who the United States actually owes all that money to? Well, today we're going to take a look at who the United States is actually in debt to. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other wild debts from history you'd like to hear about. Okay, time to follow the money. Since 2019, Japan has been the largest foreign owner of U.S. debt, peaking at $1.53 trillion in 2014. That's a lot of yen. Japanese holdings of U.S. Treasuries did drop over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, and Japanese demand for U.S. Treasuries reached its lowest point in late 2022 after the Fed raised interest rates on the U.S. dollar, weakening the yen. The Japanese demand for U.S. bonds has long been an important part of the American economy and financial markets. So seeing the Japanese government sell short-term U.S. bonds in an effort to strengthen its own currency gave Wall Street some conniptions. Don't start sending them charity money yet, because the concern was short-lived. Japanese demand for U.S. Treasuries rose again in early 2023, thanks to Japanese pension funds buying 10-year U.S. bonds due to their higher yield than the Japanese equivalent. So, on behalf of the U.S. economy, thanks, Japanese pensioners, and have a great retirement. Over the last two decades, China has been one of the largest foreign holders of U.S. debt. At the 2013 peak of Chinese holdings in U.S. treasuries, China held about $1.59 trillion worth when adjusted for inflation, which is enough cash to build a water slide on the moon. Today, however, China has been cutting back on U.S. treasuries due in part to the uncertainty of U.S. government and politics. But it's mostly because over the last two decades, the Chinese Yuan has become one of the strongest and most used currencies in the world. As such, it is no longer pegged to the U.S. dollar. And Chinese businesses have been using the Yuan rather than the dollar in both domestic and foreign markets. In recent years, some economists have raised fears that China may attempt to sell off all its U.S. debt at once, which could ultimately destabilize the U.S. economy. But most believe it's unlikely that China will take such a risk, because with the U.S. market so deeply intertwined and necessary for the global market, the collapse of the U.S. dollar would still greatly harm the Chinese economy. The United Kingdom gave the United States James Bond, the Beatles, and a London underground tube load of cash. According to the U.S. Department of the Treasury, U.K. investments in U.S. Treasuries rose from about $140 billion when adjusted for inflation in 2011 to about $670 billion in 2023. However, unlike many other global economies, the U.K. was slow to return to pre-pandemic levels of gross domestic product. In the wake of Brexit and the Ukraine war, inflation and taxes in the country have outpaced wage growth leaving many UK citizens in a difficult economic situation. Cold, blimey. If the US were to default on its debts, the UK economy could suffer even more. According to UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, the UK is set to avoid recession, but a US default would likely pull the UK economy into it. So they might want to send 007 to make sure this all works out for them. He's got a license to kill and a license to practice accounting. In May of 2014, economists were surprised to see Belgium become the third largest foreign holder of U.S. Treasury debt. Although they shouldn't have been that surprised, Belgium created the Smurfs, which had a stranglehold on the purse strings of many American households in the 80s. Still, it was a little unexpected that a country the size of Maryland would hold close to $400 billion in U.S. Treasuries. Even more perplexing was the fact that Belgium's holdings had more than doubled from August of the year before. The mystery was quickly solved when Belgian-based financial house Euroclear, which sounds like bottom-shelf booze but actually specializes in security transaction settlements, claimed responsibility for the surge. Euroclear could not provide specifics, which ironically makes things less Euroclear, but we know it holds assets for over 2,000 institutions in more than 90 countries. Financial experts assumed those assets were temporarily held by Belgium from other countries, primarily China or Russia. As predicted, Belgian holdings of U.S. Treasury securities dropped back down to about $150 billion in 2015. 
But since then, Belgian holdings have increased again, reaching about $330 billion in 2023. That's a lot of smurfing money. On the southern border of Belgium is the even smaller nation kingdom of Luxembourg. With a population of less than 650,000 people and a GDP of $85 billion, Luxembourg has one of the highest GDPs per capita in the world, which we imagine really ticks Belgium off. But while the GDP is impressive, it doesn't fully explain how this small country is able to invest nearly $320 billion in U.S. treasuries. The truth is, similar to their larger but less wealthy neighbor, treasury investments made in Luxembourg are likely not being made by Luxembourg citizens, but by foreign companies. Luxembourg has a reputation as a tax haven, which of course makes it a major banking and financial center. More like Leupolberg. The small nation is home to over 155 different banks that service corporations and their subsidiaries from all over the world, including Amazon, Apple, and Ikea. That Swedish meatball restaurant that also sells furniture. Thanks to Luxembourg's tax laws, many of the corporations that funnel earnings through the country pay a tax rate of less than 1%. And rather than let that money sit, the Luxembourgers find it more profitable to invest in bonds, bills, and other securities, like U.S. Treasuries. With white sandy beaches, no income tax, and a GDP per capita that far exceeds most other nations in the Caribbean, the Cayman Islands sounds more like a mysterious Star Trek planet than an actual place on Earth. But the small group of islands, which has a population of about 68,000 people and a GDP of just under $6 billion, is actually home to more companies than people. Over the years, it has hosted subsidiaries and shell companies from corporations like Facebook, BP, and Goldman Sachs Group. It was also a filming location for James Cameron's directorial debut, Piranha 2, The Spawning. It didn't have the same cultural impact as Avatar. Much of the wealth in the Cayman Islands is made and held through hedge funds, which are accounts that pool investor wealth into securities and other investments. The British territory houses over 50% of the world's hedge funds, and in February 2021, the U.S. Treasury Department reported that the Cayman Islands became the largest monthly net buyer of long-term U.S. Treasuries. When you think of the Swiss, you probably think of chocolate, hot chocolate, and those bank accounts where movie criminals hide all their money, and possibly chocolate. But Switzerland also has a long history as a global financial capital, welcoming many Treasury bond investments. In early 2023, Switzerland's ostensibly stable economy was thrown into turmoil amid a banking crisis. Beginning with a March collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in the U.S., depositors and investors around the world feared for the stability of their own investments. Though most banks survived the market turmoil, Switzerland's second largest bank, Credit Suisse, did not. The bank collapsed and was bought up by its largest rival, UBS Group. As of May 2023, the effects of this crisis are still uncertain, and many questions have been raised about the strength of the Swiss economy, as well as the nation's status as a financial center. If the U.S. were to default, owners of U.S. treasuries in Switzerland, along with the rest of the world, would suffer losses, which could put Switzerland's economic health in even greater jeopardy. And you do not want to anger the Swiss. Have you seen their army knives? Ireland was actually the eighth largest foreign creditor to the United States in 2023, in large part because U.S. corporations were using Ireland as a starting point for European operations, due to the country's low corporate taxes and English-speaking workforce. Many of the U.S. treasuries held were attributed to subsidiaries of some of the largest U.S. companies, including Google's parent company Alphabet, to avoid a repatriation tax on overseas profits. In 2018, however, there was a major drop-off in U.S. treasuries held in Ireland, which some experts believed was due to U.S. companies repatriating their profits to the U.S. And if you don't know what repatriation means, well, alphabet it. In 2021, Ireland agreed to a joint international agreement to set the tax rate on multinational corporations to a minimum of 15%, which experts suspect could end the country's status as a tax haven. So even the luck of the Irish has its limits. Canada is respected throughout the world for being the friendly little country that gave us Rush and Michael J. Fox. It's also the northern neighbor to the U.S. So an average of $2.4 billion worth of product is traded between the two nations every day. Any economic crisis in the United States could have immediate effects on the Canadian economy, 
so there is probably no country more concerned with a potential U.S. default than Canada. Despite these close ties, Canada understandably cannot interfere in political standoffs that could bring about a U.S. default. The Canadian government and economists, however, are usually watching closely to minimize any ripple effects or spillover recessions that they predict will occur if the United States cannot come to an agreement over the debt ceiling. And if they get really mad, they'll take Ryan Reynolds away. The largest creditor to the United States is not actually a foreign nation. It's the good old U.S. of A. In fact, as of January 2023, foreign nations own just 25% of the U.S. national debt. The rest is split between public and intergovernmental holdings in America. So you're probably wondering how anything can be in debt to itself. Well, some federal agencies, including Social Security, the Military Retirement Fund, and Medicare, take in more tax revenue than is needed for their agency. Rather than let money sit there, those agencies invest in bonds, bills, and other securities, allowing the federal government to use the money elsewhere. But, as with any other debt, the federal government must still pay it back. Um, eventually. The rest of the debt the United States owes to itself is in public holdings, which include everything except the federal government and its agencies. A little over 50% of the U.S. debt is owed to U.S. banks and investors, mutual funds, pension funds, state and local governments, holders of savings bonds, and insurance companies, among many other private businesses, including your cousin Denny, who says he's got a real great investment opportunity and just needs a couple of grand to get it off the ground. Come on, lend him the cash. One of the largest owners among these is the U.S. Federal Reserve, which uses treasuries to regulate inflation and the amount of money in circulation. Due to the 2020 pandemic, the Fed increased the amount of treasuries it owned to stimulate the economy and support financial markets. As of August 2022, the U.S. Federal Reserve owns almost $9 trillion of U.S. debt, from C-note to shining C-note. So what do you think? Which of these U.S. debt holders surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.